Hey, welcome to the Brooks McDonald Show. Um, hadn't been to you guys in a while. We're in our new studio, uh, i.e. the study library in our house. And um, today I have a special guest, hopefully one that'll be recurring for me. She is in my life. Uh, Carrie Beth, my beautiful wife. Welcome to the show. Hey guys, glad to be here. Um, yeah, so we are excited to, to chat with you and really just excited to be in this house. The fact that there's bookshelves and books on them uh, and the paintings done and all that. So if we toured you around, there may be a couple other items, but uh, for the most part, it's, it's come together, right? It has been a process, but it is. Yeah, absolutely. And so uh, I want to spend, we're going to spend some time today uh, just Well, first of all, some of you maybe have never met Carrie Beth before, and we talk about our journey. And so uh, we met when we were in high school at church, and we were engaged when she was 18, I was 19. She was still a senior in high school, well, the summer after her graduation when we got uh, engaged. And then a couple years later, when we were 21 and 20, we got uh, married. And we've walked through a lot of life since then. It's a lot of ups, a lot, uh, some downs, uh, mistakes made along the way in, in different ways. Uh, but, but ultimately, what I think a lot of listeners, Carrie Beth, want to l- hear about and what we hear from a lot of younger folks or well, of all ages is, hey, how did you get to where you are? Um, and some of it, it's just so you know, if you're listening, it's really hard for us to talk about some of this. And my hand is in front of Carrie Best's face in this camera, so I'd keep my hands down. Um, some, it's really hard for us to talk about some of this because it can really seem bragging. And you may think sometimes that we brag. Maybe I do brag sometimes. I don't know. But it, uh, as you well know, with imposter syndrome, sometimes you get nervous about, should I even share some of this? But we've been able to build ourselves into a life to where uh, we have... Uh, so a lot of time freedom. Uh, we have a lot of financial freedom, and we're living in a place that we've dreamed about for a long time. And yeah, what do you have to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I think what we've realized is it's time to share our story because that's what people want to know about every human, right? Yeah. How did you get there? What are you doing? Um, and I would say that we're passionate about sharing our story with others <laughs> so that. Maybe we can encourage some people along the way, or hey, even just as good, they learn from our mistakes. So happy to be here sharing what we've done together. Yeah. So one topic that we want to kind of discuss a little bit today is around a book that we've read, which I do a lot of book conversations, The Life and Air. Uh, one that I don't see, you don't hear uh, uh, mainstream and like even, you know, like the color and art and things isn't one like one of like the top selling self-help books. Maybe it was at one time and I'm just late to the party. But I got introduced to this a couple years ago and I've read through it a couple times. Second time around, Carrie Beth, we listened through it together and then you finished it off. Um, and it says, an uncommon approach to wealth, success, and prosperity. And when we both read the book, I think we we both came to similar conclusions of like, man, this really tells a lot about what we want to be about. Um and so, because there was a decision made, especially back in 2019, um, where I went, me and Carrie Beth, we were sitting, we were in uh, Franklin, Tennessee, just outside Nashville, and we were about to have our son move to this other private school, and we were prepping all that, and we both just felt this strong urge to say, it was the, I've talked about this on here before, don't blink. Um, the kids are growing up too fast. Enjoy their time while they're young. So we're going to homeschool and we're going to travel the world and do that for 2020, a lot of 2020. And so I let staff know, I let them, uh, my team know, my management team I had real heart to heart with them to say, hey, can you task this while I go do this? They're like, absolutely. Um, and then what happens? You can jump in. Like, come on. Uh, this isn't a trick question. <laughs> well, then, COVID unbeknown happens. to us, COVID happened in March of 2020, which was a blessing to our family. And what unfolded after that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think about like um, with with COVID, we always wanted to like challenge, like, hey, we were planning to do this before COVID. This was like a COVID prompted thing. Um, but we found ourselves at spring break down at our, our, Second home beach house down in uh, Destin, Florida, Miramar Beach, Florida, and 
lockdown happened, school stopped anyways. Um, I was listening to a Joe Rogan podcast on the way down, so I literally thought the world was ending. Carrie Beth looked at me like I was crazy because I drove this little two-door Jeep Wrangler that we had down, and I'd gone to Walmart at like 11.45 p.m. and bought every perishable good they had. This stuff could survive a nuclear attack. It was like the chili, the baked beans, the shelf life one, it's like 30 years. And it wasn't eaten, and it's still probably good. <laughs> well, yeah, still could be edible, right? And my wife, especially, she's a way, uh, she's led the health side of the journey and, and drugged me along kicking and screaming. So, like, everything I brought in, she, I mean, she probably would be on her deathbed before she ate, ate it, right? Fair, yes. Um, uh, so, anyways, we were there and, and we realized COVID started. And so fi- we found ourselves quarantining at our beach house for a longer period of time. And so we'd already planned to do this trip and we were going to be in Europe. We we're going to do Italy uh, for a period of time. Uh, then, as you can imagine, if you remember historically in 2020, especially Italy was like ground zero at the beginning of COVID. And so we're like, well, we're not doing that. We're not going overseas. So we drove around Florida and we started contemplating RV life. And so um, we were looking around thinking about buying an RV and, and exploring, exploring RVs that were on the market. And so we find this great little RV, right? Pax. We named it Pax because when we were in Florida down in the Keys, we did a dolphin swimming experience and the dolphin's name was Pax. Um, little side note, Pax is the grandson of Flipper. Flipper. Yeah, Flipper from the TV show. And so we named our RV Pax because he could pack a lot of stuff for us. And he was like rough and ready, man. That was a rugged little deal, right? Um, but it was perfect for our life. And we said, you know what? We're going to go travel. And so we did about an eight-week trip. When when was that in 2020? Uh, Fall of 2020. We left in September. So we left in September. She's so good with dates. Um, Most of September and October. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So where all did we go on that trip? (laughs) Um, So our first kind of destination where we stopped was Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And we did Grand Tetons, Yellowstone, Glacier National Park, and then made our way... um, West Coast, all the way from the Washington, Oregon, California coast, cut over, Zion National Park, Grand Canyon, and then down to Texas, San Antonio, Houston area to visit family. Yeah. What was your favorite? What would you say if you had to say your top Come three on. spots? But on just spot that here. trip? Yeah, on that trip. Okay. Glacier, because we'd never been, and it's... That's one of mine, too. I won't repeat it. Otherworldly beautiful. Yeah. Three, Zion, um, Always for different reasons, but being down in the canyon and sharing it with the kids, the kids doing the Narrows hike with us. Those are my top two, easy out the gate. Yeah. So Could you say three's there? probably Yellowstone, just because it's always awesome in the okay. wildlife. The only thing I would change because my top two are Glacier and Zion, but I think on this answer, on this moment, I would say um, Big Sur. Oh, man. Ah, yeah. I knew that was going to be you change it over to Big Sur. Just that we we were in this RV and like we would find RV parks that were like, we'll do a whole episode on RV life at some point. But For we'd sure. find some slummy RV <laughs> parks. So we were towing that same two-door Jeep that I said that I'd prepped for the world ending in. We were towing it behind this little Class C RV and... Um, we class C RV, not a Honda CRV. And uh, we would get in it at times and we would just like throw backpacks of clothes in and we go stay in a hotel somewhere. So we escaped this like terrible uh, RV park in San Benito, California and uh, went to Monterey. Talk about a difference and stayed in like this hotel in Monterey and the Big Sur Lodge and ate at a restaurant called what? Nepenthe. Nepenthe. And just this beautiful lookout, and oh my gosh! See, we can, we can just go on forever. We said we're going to keep this nice and short, but we'll see. No, (laughs) it's good. Um, And so that was our life. As Carrie Beth said, we went visited family in Texas. We drove back, got to back to Florida, and at that point, we were like, okay, we're going to make this our home. We'd already decided we're going to make Florida our home base for now. We put renters in our house in Nashville and Franklin. They were out of New York escaping really tough COVID times. Um, and we're going to, you know, stay. In, and actually, we had all these renters still booked because Florida <laughs> led the way in being open. So everybody was trying to get away. So we still had some renters. So while we were on our trip, we had renters staying in our 
our beach house here. Uh, so it was kind of cool. Uh, talking about financial freedom. We like had renters in our Franklin house. We had like really good rentals coming in, in our beach house and it's funding our excursion out West. Right. It's the way to go. It was a good time. And re- when did we go on the next trip? So we came back in October, we did the holidays and everything here. And our kids ultimately decided that they socially would like to be back into a school. So we found a flexible private school, put them in for the spring semester, and then we took off again in June. Okay. So that was summer of 21. Summer of 21. And we, at that point, went to, started in Savannah, Georgia, and like worked our way up. Babe, you'd know better than me the stops kind of made, like D.C. and uh-huh. well, even before that, Charleston. Charleston, um, Williamsburg, D.C., New York, <laughs> parked outside of New York City yeah. in that rig. An RV near New York, New York City was an experience. Um, let's see. Newport, Rhode Island, which was awesome. Um, Connecticut, a farm in Connecticut where I got to see the Gilmore Girls land. Yeah. Um, let's see. What else do we do? Uh, Salem. And then Maine. Oh, y'all. Kenny Bunkport, Maine. And then up to Bar Harbor area to do Acadia National Park. Did you say Cape Cod before that? Okay. The Cape. Uh-huh. We did the Cape. We did... Um, we went all the way across... Say all the way. Across New England to Niagara Falls. Niagara. So in the process, we're like mm-hmm. in... Uh, Saratoga Springs, New York, random oh, town right. that was just a stop along the way that yeah. we really liked. And we also learned that Jellystone, Nash, uh, Jellystone RV parks were pretty fun for the kids. That they literally just wanted to go stay at Jellystones. Kids and are big play fan. on the big bouncy thing uh, things in the RV park and watch their outdoor movies and stuff. So that was about a seven week trip. So about fifteen weeks all together over a year period that we did. And so as we came back, and again, amazing team. Uh, there's a lot of directions we could go with this, but I'll talk again about scaling a business and empowering team members and putting people that are better than you in positions at another time, because that's a whole different thing. And I could not do justice in the time we're wanting to share, sharing about how awesome the team I have is and how they're just, they know roles that we put together and they rock at that and they let me do my thing. So, uh, so that kind of is like a flavor. I wanted to give you a flavor of kind of like what we've done. And then um, also a, another big experience for us would have been at the end of 21, uh, where we uh, went through a partnership process with a private equity firm. Um, and pr- the private equity uh, took over ownership of McDonald Insurance. And we transitioned to a whole nother area that was not even foreseen uh, that put us on a path with our uh, financial freedom and also just in business, the next level up for our team and, and where it was going. And so huge things. But it all 14 minutes and 13 seconds, you know, later, I don't think it's that long, probably in what you're watching, but um, I I hope that gives you kind of a reference point about like where we've been lately, but how did we get there? And the Life and Air book, uh, the principles in Life and Air is just challenging you to think about what's your ultimate commodity is time and time freedom. And what were your takeaways from the book? I just love it. First of all, to begin with, that conversation that we had in 2019 that really changed our lives in December of 2019, where we said, we're not going to do this. We see something else. We have a different vision. Um, That takes intentionality and putting down what your vision is. And that's a lot of what this book is that is causing you to go, hey, um, just because society says that it's normal doesn't mean that that has to be what your vision for your life is. So it's getting clear on what do you see doing with your time? And so this book begins, it tells a story. It does a great job of telling a story of some fictional characters. And it paints the picture of kind of typical corporate America and what it looks like to climb the ladder of success, right? And um, we all know it. But what that means is trading time for money, right? Yeah. And so it's about another guy using what he's already been through 
to help somebody else who thinks they're climbing this ladder of success and where will that go and where will that stop and helps him to take a hard stop look at, but where's your life? You're doing all these things for business. Where's your life? Which also draws me to, if y'all have seen Emily in Paris, I'm sorry, but in the Parisian style where they, a lot of people in America, we want to live to work. And they're working to live. And so that's the idea behind this as well. Yeah. I mean, and for me, you know, capitalistic to the core, entrepreneur on the on the kind of business scale, high D on the disc profile, high eight on the uh, Enneagram profile. Like, I'm like, let's go, man, let's get it done. And so there's a, there's some like American deep rootedness of like, Ooh, cause we don't want to think about like, we want to blow it out of the water. And, but I think we, what we need to be rearranged to and where biblical values, where we want to stand on is, well, what does blowing it out of the water mean? Uh, and our spiritual walk and being a well-rounded individual is like Tony Robbins would reference um, versus um, in the whole idea of making all this money and doing really well and burning all the time and energy to get there. But what happened to your kids? What happened to your family? What about the people around you? What did you affect? And and how did that, what did you accomplish? And so the principle in that is like, hey, let's figure out where you really are. A, a guy that I, I follow under uh, as well as Chris Harder, uh, so friends of mine are good friends with him too. And um, he challenges you to say, uh, he just sent out a text the other day that said, hey, everybody says they want to make like a million dollars a year, two million dollars a year. But when you realize how much schedule you have to do to, to make that money and to maintain that level of production... For most people, that just doesn't come easy. That's not just like a, oh, you know, it's just really easy. Nobody, I think, would even view it that way. Um, But you realize, wait a second, what if I wanted to live my life a certain way? Maybe it takes $200,000 a year. Maybe for some people, it's $70,000 a year. Maybe it's $400,000 a year, or maybe it is a million dollars a year to really live that experience. But writing that out and and experiencing that in, in the character in the book is challenging this guy that's a builder and he's just running ragged. He's got the brand new cars, the brand new house, the brand new toys, and he's got kids that hate him and a wife that really doesn't like spending time around him. And he has no time to do any of those things. And so the challenge in the book is like, well, what if you lived in a smaller home in an older area? What if you drove used cars? And it's the idea of, hey, you've been trying to drive uh, income. What if you worked on lowering your expenses and that gap in between buying you time? And just going back to our story for a minute, that was one big piece for us is we sacrificed income to give us a gap of time. And that was done for me in the process of really talented people that were able to uh, come in and run the day-to-day. There's still an insurance business that you know I sit as the president of that we have defined roles and and tasks and they're in those their processes and there's what we call swim lanes and I'm in my swim lane and I still am able to pour in vision and what may seem easy to me that's because of wisdom of 20 years I'm able to hold that role while they're doing that but it gives me time freedom uh, to be in the school line at 2.30 at times to pick up the kids or to get them to where they need to go and to be versatile and, and available for God. Ultimately, I don't want to, what we really want to be a part of is like, what's God's vision for us? Where does he, where can he use us the most and being in that? Yeah. And a lot of this is like, okay, so you're getting so caught up in the career, which the thing is, is this guy was like so many other people of he's, you know, ultimately in his mind was doing it for his family. He was making all this money for his family that he never got the time to spend with. And then ultimately, what are you doing with all that money? Well, he had all these toys and all these things, but he was never enjoying them. And so it's the point is that's how we got to time being our ultimate commodity, right? And it's it's just really eye-opening because as we said about those kids that we decided in 2019, time's not going backwards, they're going to keep growing and we only have so much time with them. And so to us, that was our kick in the pants to make sure what our, what does our time look like? Um, what do we get to spend with them? What do we want to show them? And as Brooks just said, ultimately for us in our faith of um, what does it look like to let God lead? What does it look like to let him lead in our lives and our family's lives with our kids? And so that just where we're at. Yeah. So 
Um, the, some of the pieces in life and air, if you pick it up, I don't I always, every book, there's some stuff I agree with, some stuff I don't. And it's around like, uh, if you have rental properties and poured into it, have no debt on anything. So no debt on rental properties. I, at least at this point in my life, uh, we'll talk at how that those times can change, feel that you can leverage, um, a bank's money, uh, private loans to build a balance sheet wealth and be able to, you're, Dollars are soldiers, and when you put those soldiers out to work, and there's a parable of talents that we could kind of reference to some of that, um, it gives them uh, the ability to grow faster, and someone else build your balance sheet for you. But there's also scripture about you know the debtor being a slave to the lender, and how uh, debt looks like, and not having debt. So you have to walk through that and spiritually discern where you're going to be. But there's a lot of really wise financial advisors that would challenge you. That hey, some some loans are good to be able to give you a broader realm, but their point in the book goes back to time. And hey, if you were able to have make sure and do your math, because one fully paid off rental property may yield you the same financial results as four that are leveraged at eighty percent with mortgages, and then all of a sudden you have four headaches of renters that have light bulbs going out and air conditioners breaking and any of those pieces to where it's the whole point of enjoying your life in the moment. And if you have all the stuff that's dividing you and building it up and distracting you from what's important, then you need to really challenge yourself. What is the most important thing right now? And is that your time with family or building that, right? Yeah. And I think, I mean, a lot of the ultimate point of the book is freedom in general and being free from what you think you have to do. And for a lot of us, you know, you graduated, you went to school. Okay, now what are you going to do? And you kind of can get on this cycle where you never even stop and think about it. So if you don't have a vision of where you're going to go, where are you going? And in fact, in one of the, these people have a, a podcast as well, and I haven't listened to much of it, so I can't recommend, but <laughs> the Life and Air podcast. But they were talking about how, um, you know, you will, many people will not take the time it takes to create a vision when if you don't have a vision, you don't know where you're going. And in in the, an even different part of way of saying that is you'll spend little time making this vision or you'll spend a whole lot of time living the life you don't want to live. So. Yeah. Yeah. Another way to put it is you're going to live your vision or you're going to live someone else's vision from a working perspective. And that's okay. Sometimes you may want to work and help support somebody else's vision because they have it. But ultimately, uh if you're going to work, you're going to do one of the two. You're going to build on your vision or someone else's vision. Uh, so yeah, um, that's a synopsis of life in there, and you know, a really good chance with as we start these new series of podcasts to give some background about you know where we come from, our life, and we'll kind of share more into that as we get deeper into it. Sweetheart, thank you for being a part of this. You have something else? Yeah, I just wanted to say for a minute as we begin to unfold our story and where we're at, and just share with you guys on our thoughts and. Um, where do we want to tell them? We would love for questions. If anyone wants questions for some of our yeah. podcasts. Yeah, look at you. You're already jumping ahead on me here. But yeah, <laughs> as you watch this, obviously, whatever form you're bringing this in, probably either YouTube or one of the podcast channels, whether it be uh, your Apple Podcasts or myriad of other ways that we're coming to you live, make sure and send comments there. But also, um, you know, you can find us on Instagram, um, my Instagram is the Brooks McDonald because there was already somebody else. So I had to clarify, make it clear who that was that really was Brooks McDonald. Um, and then what's your? Mine is Carrie Beth McDonald, spelled just like my name, which is C A R I B E T H McDonald. Yeah, yeah, we'd love to connect with you and chat more. Uh, ultimately. In our, in our journey and your journey, you want to have mentors, and some of those are way ahead of you, um, but also we may be ones that are just a couple steps ahead of you. And sometimes learning from the person that's a couple steps ahead of you can be more impactful than the one that feels like it's out of reach. Fair enough? Yeah, for sure. We right. have that for ourselves. Yeah, that's right. We have plenty that thankfully we glean a lot of information from. So thank you for your time this morning uh, and just or this afternoon, wherever you're, wherever you're coming through the airwaves <laughs> on us. Uh, and we look forward to chatting more. <laughs>